Well, we've run out of gas. What did you say? Gas is changed, so this is where we store the gas. Well, actually, I think the last time we've shown you around it was four years ago. So maybe it's time for us to show you where we live. For those who were not there at the beginning, watch the videos. But yeah, let's come around, I'll show you. Before we start with the boat tour, and in case you're new here, we are on a sailing catamaran, which is a costume-made model as opposed to a production boat. It is an Australian design from Peter Snell called Easy, hence the name Take It Easy. It is 11.6 meters long and 6 meters large. There's one cabin in each hull with a double and a single bed in each. All right, so this is um, our living room. So this is where we hang out most of the time. We have drinks, food, Whatever. Yeah, so it's a nice area in the middle. I feel like a real estate agent doing that. <laughs> but yeah, this is where we live. Then down there, we've got the galley. So that's the most useful stuff. So that's the mint to do the moritos. Got the galley here and all the fresh stuff there. So fruits and everything. Fridge, freezer, beers, Pringles, whatever. Our old fridge used to be a boxed one, which opened from the top. Very annoying to use. And now we are getting a lot of extra storage space. If you cross over the boat, we've got this side, this hole, which is the nav table where we do all the calculation to plan where we're gonna go to. So tell the truth, how many times have we used this nav table? Many times, to just not to plan our trips. <laughs> Usually we just put a lot of crap here. <laughs> but yeah, we plan everything with our phone, so. And on that side is the, is the head, so you cut the head, and if you close, there's the shower on top. And here's the, the shower. You can just close all of that. Yeah. And yeah, here you've got the shower. This is where you shower. So Come on, turn on the water. Alright. <laughs> it's not huge, but enough room to get a shower. So here we've got the bedroom. So that's our um, main one. We've got another one on the other side. This one is slightly bigger. You can see on the side, there's some space to put stuff. And here we have a single bed, but I'm using it for fins spear gun and all my diving equipment and we've got all our swimming suit and everything there wetsuit all right now if we go outside we've got the cockpit and our two benches on the side with nice cushions to hang out table in the middle and this is mainly where we sit where when we sail so if you look here we've got our um, sailing instruments engines and yeah, this is where we sit when we sail, but also when we get some drinks. So sailing equipment, we've got this Raymarine tablet, which is the nice hybrid touch. And basically we've got everything on that tablet. So all the instruments are linked there and we can read everything from there, like the wind strengths, the wind directions, the, the depth, the water temperature, everything is linked to that tablet. Very easy to use. And what are the stuff up there? Duplicates. <laughs> so basically all of that, in case something doesn't work, we can just turn on, for example, this one, which is the autopilot, for example. So we can just use the autopilot directly here. And yeah, everything is duplicate, so... And here we've got the radio. This is Take It Easy, over. Just take it easy, sir, quickly, speaker on channel 72. 72. Going to 72. You've got this one outside and the handheld radio on the inside. On this side we've got the AIS, so people can see where we are and track us down. That's where we turn on the anchor light, the navigation, Right, autopilot and everything. 
So also here we've got all this room to store stuff. So on this side we've got all the fuel, got spare lines, and yeah, that's uh, that's all storage all across the bench. So which is a lot of storage, and yeah, that's very useful. So we don't have all the jerry cans hanging on the side; they are all tucked in there. Then if you look at that cushion, we've got the engines. And here we've got some jerkins with fuel. So those are directly connected to the, the engines. And yeah, that's about it about the for the cockpit. We've got our deck, which is a nice area because um, when we are at anchor, sit here and enjoy. Because we can have the wind and the breeze coming, so it's not too hot. Hang out, maybe hang out on the trampolines here. Which is also something quite nice. You probably have seen this is my favorite spot when we are sailing with the spinnaker. I love being on the trampolines when we are moving on the water. We've got a lot of storage, like all those. Here we've got our fenders and we don't use them very often as we don't go to marinas too often, but it is secured in there. And then we've got um, this storage. Tuck in. Hey, hey. hey! What are you doing here? I don't know, relaxing. Just hiding from you, yeah. I guess. Did I forget you down there when I locked you up <laughs> last time? <laughs> nah, I haven't been here for a uh, long get out. time. Get out. I mean, it's my storage. Get out. What? Just because you want to show it around? Yes, yes. Alright, so now that the room is free, I can show you here. This is where we are storing our big spinnaker. We've got e scooter, some more fenders, and in that box there's our diving equipment. There's a lot of room there, which is quite nice because that sail is big and we can store all of that. Yeah. And it's a dry storage. It's a dry storage, yeah. Compared to the others. Yeah, the others there's water coming in, this one, no. Because here there's also a little secret spot to get into the bedroom. We've got the anchor that is under our Maxwell windlass. I think that's yeah, we've got all our spare anchors here, and over there we've got our anchor chain. As you can see, this is also where we've put our fins. I mean, you mean my fins? Yeah, because mine are inside. Because your fins have a bed. Yes, yes. Maybe next we can show the sails, the sail that we've got. Here at the head we've got two. So that's the inner sail or the storm sail. That's a small one. And as you can see where that trumpeter is, it can be very tight. So it's very good to go upwind. So we use this one when we are not going into the wind, of course, but when the angle is pretty tight. So that's the one we use. Or we also use this one when there's a lot of wind. And then there's the main one, the head. That's the head sail. That one is way bigger because it goes up to the top of the mast, which is not usual for all the boats. Some boats have it not going to the top, but ours is quite big. Then it wraps around the boat, and goes to the travelers here. Or we can have this line going on the outside if we are going downwind. Then next we've got the main. That's the main. We've got three reefs, as you can see here. Here, that's what we use to actually reduce the sail. Um, so when there's a lot of wind, we can put the first reef here, which means we're gonna remove that amount of sail. And if you put the second reef, we're gonna remove a little bit more sail. And the third reef, even more sail. So basically, the more wind there is, the less sail we need. And also, if we have all the sail up and there's a lot of wind, it's hard to stop the boats and it's gonna go too quick. So, overpower boats is not good. Maybe this calls for a bit more details about the sails. You may already know that, or it might seem obvious, but we have to set up the sails differently based on the wind angle and strength. 
First thing to know is that any sailing boat can't sail into the wind, which we call the no-sail zone. But for a catamaran, or at least one like ours without dagger boards, that zone is actually a bit bigger. But as a compensation, monohulls can't really sail the dead downwind area, which isn't a problem for us. The point of sails have different names for different setups based on the wind angle. The first one is called close hull and requires the sails to be as tight as possible. Then we have close reach, beam reach, broad reach, downwind and dead downwind or run. Our small inner sail or stay sail helps us with the first two angles. From the beam reach onward, it's not very helpful unless we are in a storm. The greater the angle from the wind, the more we start opening the sails. Additionally, if the wind is light, we can start using the spinnaker. On a downwind angle, the theory would want us to position the genoa or head sail on the opposite side, otherwise it wouldn't get any wind behind the main. However, we've never managed to make this work, so instead, we don't bother with the main and use the genoa in its normal position. But mostly, we use the spinnaker with that angle. Got our starling, useful to get into it. And maybe I can show you the power we have. I mean the power. <laughs> what we use to get power. So we've got our three solar panels, which is a little bit over 1100 watts. That's quite a lot for about that size, but we love our power. We also have the wind generator up there. It's not producing a lot of power, but a little bit so when there's no no sun and there's a lot of wind it is keeping us afloat so it is quite nice that's it that's our tiny floating home now let us tell you more about our plans for the season if you are new here well first of all welcome and if you've made it this far in the video make sure to subscribe so if you are new here you might not know that our plan last year was to sell to indonesia which unfortunately didn't happen so for this season it's back on the books we are currently between Gold Coast and Brisbane, so we will use the next few months to sail up to Cairns, where we want to stop for a few weeks. On the way, we want to go and explore the outer reef. For context, the inner reef or fringing reef refers to sections of the reef that are situated closer to the mainland or surrounding islands. These areas primarily consist of softer coral varieties and they serve as habitats for smaller fish species. The captivating visuals often associated with the Great Barrier Reef, showcasing vibrant corals and colorful fish, predominantly depict the outer reef. This is what most individuals envision when they plan a visit to the reef. However, what many fail to realize when admiring these images is that most outer reef sites are located far offshore, which is at least a full day sail for us, or even an overnight. We haven't fully decided yet, but we are hoping to go to the Swains or the Flinders, maybe both. It's all dependent on the wind, of course, but also the water temperature. Above 27 degrees, there is a risk of cyclone, so we'll have to wait and see when we go. The rest of the plan is very similar to what we were thinking of doing last year. Explore the ribbon reefs on our way up and go to Thursday Island, where we will cross to Indonesia. Another thing to know for this year is that experts are anticipating an El Niño event. This has a lot of consequences for the environment and for us sailors. Temperature will raise, trade winds will weaken and we might get fewer tropical cyclones. It's difficult to know for now how long it would last, so it's just something to keep in the back of our minds. This season we've also decided that we want to share the love a bit. We feel really blessed to be able to do what we do and we actually enjoy sharing that as well. But our friends and families have not been able to visit as much, so we decided to share with others. We already have a young girl coming for a few months and we can't wait to welcome her. Anyways, that's it for our season. Hopefully this year we will manage to do everything we want, but regardless, we're just happy to live our dream wherever that takes us. If you want to see that, make sure to subscribe. It really helps us develop our channel and drop us a like. See you next time. Bye.